Good morning and welcome to Moopsie in the Morning for November the 15th, 2024. I am Mom. And that is Chris. That is me. That is you. And good morning, Cliff. And good morning, Sav. And good morning, whoever else is out there this morning. I have coffee. I had to go get more coffee. Coffee. Oh. Um, I woke up at like 2 o'clock and couldn't get back to sleep. Oh. It happens. Um, so when the kitchen made myself a peanut butter and jelly piece of toast, which I shared with the dogs, let them out. Uh, and then all of a sudden I realized, now I'm tired. Went back to bed and then the alarm goes off at five and it's like, oh, I can't do this. I yeah, good if- moaning is probably the best way to describe it. You wake up and you moan. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm awake again. That was me today. Yeah, no. I'm so tired. So I compromised. I decided I would do the show in my pajamas and get dressed afterwards so I could sleep in an extra three to four minutes. The compromises we make. Sav, we're not going there. We are not going there about you and your moaning. Just mm 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 mm. Unless it's because he's wearing a Halloween costume. <laughs> uh, so yeah, got a weekend coming up here and it's. You know, I, I keep saying my life's going to quiet down, and now I've got things going on all the time. I, I need, I want to run away just so I can take a couple of days off of life. I'll take the doggers with me. Give my son keys to the house so he can, I don't know, whatever you need to do, watch the house. Did I tell everybody about the tree that branch that fell down yesterday? Yes. It punched a what huge happened? hole in my deck. Oh, no, you thought it was no damage. Yeah, it it must have come down with maybe a branch at a 90 degree angle to the main branch oh, okay. and just... Fortunately, it's off to one side. It's kind of hidden. It's underneath the deck chair. So aside yeah. from the stupid doggers here thinking they could jump down into it, I think I will nail a piece of wood over it so they don't get stupid. And then come the spring. Fortunately, it's in one piece of uh, the deck. So I should be able to... Come here, evil dog. I should be able to get a replacement deck slat, pull the old one up, nail the new one in place, and then stain it the wrong color because I, I have no idea what color stain they used. <laughs> mm. Fortunately, that's a... I just yeah. borrow somebody's circular saw to do this. Put it in, line it that's up, the thing with the buying an apartment or house after someone else, they don't leave you, like, info which color they painted this one. And, you know... Th- Colors age, you can't make it out just making of a picture, you can just approximate, but you'll never get it 100%. Well, they left me samples of all the paints they used for everything, um, the oh. names and all that other stuff, which is great. But like you said, they age, and the companies don't make those colors necessarily anymore. Yeah, and well, they glad you they did because I don't have anything. I bought this apartment after someone, and they, they left literally nothing in terms of like. And they did renovation like only two, three years before I moved in, so like oh. the place it was fine to move in. But you know, there's always something that happens on the way, and it's just like you can't figure out. You have to like either repaint or like I, I repainted. I went for the easy way. Just besides, it's gray. The interior is gray. Who would paint the inside of their? Well, okay, I painted the inside of one of my houses with one very dark gray wall, but well, not the baby's room. Come on. Yeah, baby's room, great. It's great. Ugh. And it's where and I have so my studio, so it's really depressing to sit in here, and it's dark. Like, they wanted the child to be automatically depressed. And well, my thought was maybe they named the baby Pubert. Pubert. You've seen Adam's Family Values, haven't you? Uh, no. If you have not seen Adam's Family Values... Go watch it. The baby's name is Pubert. Oh my god. Is that new or something? No. No, it's like 15 years old. Uh, Raul Julia is in it, and he's been dead for a long time. Probably the last thing I saw that touched Adam's family was the Angelica Houston one. Angelica Houston? Yeah, she plays Morticia. Yeah, I know. It's just just like that's the last one I've seen, and there was the... Wednesday thing, I've seen like two episodes. Okay, so for Adam's family uh, with Morticia at, or uh, Angelica Houston and Raul Julia, they made two movies. They made The Adam's Family yeah. and then they made The Adam's great. Family Values, which is 1993. Ah. It, yeah, I, I, I recommend it. It is hugely funny. Well, maybe I just 
got it. No, there was a baby. I do remember yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And the kids go to was... and the kids go to summer camp. Oh yeah, I, was, I think I've seen it only once. I've seen the first one a few times, but I don't I, think I've seen. I think the second one's actually better. Yeah, they run it a lot of uh, the time at Halloween. I've just the recently had seen a good tech talk about Raul Julia yes. and about his overall very hard work in like making um, the Hispanic actors be more recognized, more active. Right. He's been doing so much good stuff for for the community as well. And he was working to the last, yeah. like at the end of it, even though he was very, yeah. very sick. So what I was reading, and by the way, let me go jump back here. Cliff, don't worry, the puppers, the puppers are fine. Um, and so you're right, Raul Julia was the only redeeming quality of Street Fighter he was. He was great in it. Uh, but he was in a, featured in a little TikTok, which is why I was thinking about uh, Adam's Family Values, saying that playing Gomez up until like a couple of days before he died, kids would recognize him as Gomez and come up and talk to him about, you know, that he was Gomez. And he just loved that. It just yeah. made him so happy that kids would recognize him. I did mention that in the tech talk, yeah. that he was very happy and he was very proud of that role and yeah. that he was recognized for it. That's so, so heartwarming. It is such a good movie. It's so stupidly fun. You just kind of, yeah. kind of have to take your um, <clears throat> sense of, huh, and put it off to the side and just go enjoy it. Street Fighter was his last movie and he was dying while it was being filmed and he just needed to get it done. Anyone want to buy some uh, lockbox keys? <laughs> Why, do you have some? Yeah, I've got a few in the exchange. I just go <laughs> like, I don't know, like blood from your nose. It's just like one every like half an hour, hour maybe. Yes, I was saying they're going for like, well, she said at 1.17 million, but was down to like 13, oh, no. 13.9 yesterday. Well, the priciest are for like, but the, not mine. I'm selling them for cheaper. It's just like twelve million seven hundred, seven seven hundred thousand like that. But I'm just I'm selling them cheaper, so. Just they, they had the keyring bundle again, ten twenty keyring. Oh, did they? Bundle. Good. I might yeah, have to it's still some. on. Um, but I'm selling them cheaper, so if anyone wants to. <laughs> I have no ulterior motive or anything like it. If someone wants to buy some, I, I have some. Oh no, someone's underbidding me. Oh, curse well, you. don't worry. Just give it five minutes. Somebody will. Someone else will come yeah. along. Uh, apparently, but someone else could have come along for mine. <laughs> Take this. Plubber just won something. So what did he win? I have no idea. Plubber got a T6 Infinity. Congratulations, Plubber. Dash darn it. Let's see, so yeah, you, s you said there's a uh, keyring box out there? Oh, you're right. Yeah, there is. 15% yeah, there off on everything, and it's 19... Well, I can't buy it on this account, that's for dang sure. But yeah, I do need to get some. I just wish they would have a Zen sale. Well, they have <sighs> a bundle sale. I think there's so many sales before that, you know... Well, normally before they do a oh, big wait. sale or before Black Friday, they do Zen sales where it's like 15% off on Zen or 20% off on Zen, depending yeah. on oh, how much I you buy. I'm sure that the uh, ship bundles are off the sale. Yeah, they changed it yesterday, I think. Damn. Yeah, well, you know how they go. So these are buyouts. But the only yeah. big sale seems to be the key packs. Well, if they're doing the key packs, it's because they've got the lockbox out there. Oh, well. Well, it's not in my oh. budget at the moment. But you know what is in my budget? Pew Pew. I have budgeted large quantities of money and time for Pew Pew. That's good. Want to go shoot things? Yeah, I'm tired of sitting in exchange for like the last three hours. Um, 
I'll <laughs> gladly shoot some stuff. And I've got one more TFO. Need to do some Tetrion damage. And I need some phaser damage, which I started oh in. Oh god, that's boring. Five path ships in the Dyson Sphere. What's the point of tra- like the, I've it got doesn't even calculate to use a transport to get there for five ships. Yeah, but I have five Oth ships, which I could do in the Dyson Sphere, too, so... I'm going to be rolling that. I just don't have oh. tokens. I'm not paying dil- Dilithium. Not going to happen. Oh, well. Do I have any other phasers? I do. Nope, those are already up there. Oh, Yawning all day. Definitely have a sleep in on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Cliff is going to join us. Okay. It seems to be faster to sell keys, but I, I guess the, the market is saturated. At the moment, because they're going for a high price, we've got a lot of people yeah, attempting to sell them. Yeah. I shouldn't have bought them, but, you know. It's an investment. It was kind of stronger. It's an investment. So, Wednesday was leg day, so yesterday was... ah day for my legs. Yesterday was arm day, so today is my legs still hurt from yesterday, and my arms are hurting. So, I'm, I'm, And I have to go back to the gym in seven hours. Ugh. And no, I'm not taking any pain meds. That's cheating. Well, if it's making, if it's making you comfortable, why is it cheating? Well, it's cheating because if I'm comfortable and don't realize that I'm in pain, I might overdo it and get seriously hurt. Uh huh. More hurt. <laughs> oh my god, they're making. What? The uh, Lilo and Stitch in life action. <sighs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess nostalgia sells, but is there really that much nostalgia for Lilo and Stitch? It wasn't even a fun movie. Well, a lot of people love it. I just don't like this get, tendency get to. I don't get this the tendency to do movie. live action. It, yeah, I don't I get mean, why you would do that. None of them, I think, outside of like the first Maleficent. I like Maleficent. I thought that was good because that was more of an original take. And I Angelina think it was Jolie. an original take. That's 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 it. It had this nostalgia aspect to it, but it was but a new one. It was a new story from a different exactly. angle, from a different perspective, telling uh, uh, it from a. And uh, I did like the sequel's idea that, you know, the story we knew that she was the villain was mm-hmm. actually told by um, Mother of the Prince because mm-hmm. she needed a villain for her arc. Like, you know, it, it makes sense that you kind of like... We heard one side of the story, which was back in the 50s, it was the one told by the evil queen of the neighboring... Empire, but it wasn't actually the real story, but the real story is the Maleficent story, and I like that. But then they did all the remakes, like like all the other live action, like ugh, none of them were really good. Hi, Mason. Uh, uh, let's see, there was uh, okay. Little Mermaid that was ugh. I God, didn't like God. Beauty and the Beast, but I didn't like I liked the cartoon, but I didn't like it because I thought the Beast was more interesting as the Beast, and when he becomes human, it's like, eh. Everyone thinks this, he was so bland when he was... And they kept the blandness of him yeah, but in the beast, live action. In the I Beast, was like, he was great. He was a wonderful one. You know, leave, mean, leave him the Beast. <laughs> Let her realize that she can love the Beast. You know, I mean, you want your DEI? Let her go into her species. Yeah, but you know that that, that wow. just goes into all the opens a can of worms. I think. Yep. Good morning, Death. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Uh, someone bought one key. Jesus. <laughs> Live action Little Mermaid was garbage. Absolutely. Oh yeah, Ab- Sav, you are so you? right. That was literally the only redeeming qualities that they kind of gave her the because. The first half of the original Little Mermaid is great because she like does what she thinks she she wants to, but then she becomes a damsel in distress in like the climax of the film. So yawn. So Eric has to free her again. He has to save her the day. And I did like in the remake that they kind of swapped the role, and she actually needs to take the wheel 
of that wrecked ship, and she's the one that gives the killing blow. But everything else about that movie was so mad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nothing against the woman who was playing, uh, whatever her name is, the Little Mermaid. She's kind of name. Whatever her name is. Ariel. Uh, Ariel. Yep. She's a good singer. She's a very good singer. But the musical director didn't know how to have her perform the music. So if you compare the singer in the uh, cartoon versus this one, and you listen to the way that the intonation, the breathing patterns, and the phrasing are done, it's night and day. As I said, not that she's a bad singer, but the musical director no, didn't do a great job. Actually, she's got the pipes. Like she's a, she's incredible when it comes to singing. And you, the 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 set the song. I actually like the music from that film because it's actually pretty good. And some of the songs are really cu- cool. But you know the when she's being. It's not really her. It's the Vanessa character, mm-hmm. the, the the imposter Ursula trying to propose as her, and then she sings in her room when it's co- complete vocalization. That's also Hale, and that's one take. She was just doing that in one single take. There was a recording of it. Blew my mind off because she goes so freaking high. I can't believe it. Yeah, like I said, that's she's actually something I, I personally thought was a bad thing about the way she did the singing in that is that as one person put it it's just singing oh no it's it, never the, the, oh, the, you the, mean the way she does it yeah it, it, it's like recording a piece for a studio album it's it doesn't have the emotion tied to it that fits the scene that's yeah. it, that's totally up on the musical director that's the musical He's director. Got he kind to of be able it. to direct them. It's like when you have voice actors who are skilled, but it, they turn in a meh job. A lot of the times, because the voice director just isn't doing right. his job. Yeah, he, he doesn't know how but to direct them properly. What, what voice directing when everything's taken in one take and that's it? It's a wrap. Yeah, no, it's not. There's well, no it's not even one going take on there. Well, the stuff was overdubbed anyway, but like. There's a scene which completely doesn't make sense, but they kept it like it, and it's like it's the best scene in the in the uh, original cartoon when she just saved Eric and she's doing the song on the on the rock, mm-hmm. and there's that scene where the wave just whooshes from behind her, and they ruin that scene because when you see what she's doing with her hands, you can see that she's actually supported on some sort of crane. Because her hands move, <laughs> they slide on the rock, and she's a mermaid, she doesn't have legs, so she can't sit comfortably on the rock. And you see so she's moving, but her hands are like she's sliding on the rock. And you can literally see that this is like, something is supporting her from below the scene, and I'm like, God, this looks so weird, this looks so tacky. What the hell? How did that leave, how did it leave that scene there? What the hell? Death, did you? No. Did Death leave us? I see you're still there. No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. It said you logged out. You so. know what question comes to mind there we go. about those movies for me? Why what? did we need to remake something that was already fine the way it was? Need is not we the operative need. word. Yeah, it wasn't need. It was the money nobody factor. They it. wanted money for it. Well, nobody really asked for a new version of the new mermaid. They just decided mm, yeah, to push we know. that through. Yeah, it's not, yeah it's, it's again, it's thing. not about the ask. It's about them wanting to make money off nostalgia for the original. Yeah. There will be people who are going to go when, for the movie to see it, even if like, even if it doesn't like make. I I I, I think they start losing money, and I'm wondering why they're still a, making this, but you know. I have a novel idea if they wanted to make money off of the oh, oh. nostalgia for the original. Pause. Which TFO are we doing? You said you needed a Borg TFO? I need the one Borg, yeah. Okay. Let me get us started here. It's a very simple one. Oh, apparently I've l- left the task force here. That's interesting. I did as well, apparently. Same. Okay, bear with me here. It starts off well. <laughs> yeah, it's been hating me lately. Come on, here we go. So Let's see if we actually get this one. To my mind is, why not then just re-release the original? I uh, mean, pro- they could just remaster it, like on the Blu-ray mm, version. They, and they, just they might not have the it. rights. Things have changed. They? They, yeah. And here's the thing. Disney has the rights to it. 
They're still profiting the of it. The right. Hold on a second. The guy who wrote the music passed away. Well, if he um, had any yeah, level, the other guy who was part right. of it was still on it. But if he's got any level of rights to the music, he might not be willing to have it remastered from the original. They redid it. The, they redid the music with the same. Right. Take. Okay. Right. Listen to what I'm saying. Sometimes the uh, creative artists have some level of control over what's happening, and it's written into the contracts. So it would probably be. It, this is just a supposition. I don't know. But sometimes it's easier not to even bother trying it rather than going through the whole legal mess of trying to get the rights away from somebody's estate. Well, well one thing that I've uh, come to realize, though, is that modern Disney doesn't <laughs> seem to want to pay any sort of royalties to people who uh, did creative work 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's not even limited to Disney themselves. Konami yes, 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 whatever. That, but what I'm getting at here is that I think they're just cutting out uh, the, the the people who originally made this stuff, uh, and that's like their entire motive for changing everything when they do a, a re rework, is that they just want to cut out it, uh, uh, any sort of royalties. Um. Then. I, I still don't see why over investing into a, a full blown remake justifies not paying royalties to an artist. They cannot outweigh the re release of this of the thing. It's well, just like I'm sure they thought they were gonna make a lot of money off of it and Yeah, I'm and pretty sure it's just about the money factor well, that he's wanted to like give a justification to reuse a story that has fun following nostalgia from like the so-called Disney Renaissance the, the, films. The problem They're here is that great. you're looking at it from a fan's perspective when uh, the uh, real uh, explanation is that it's corporate bean counters doing th uh, things for corporate bean well, counters. Well, no, I am perfectly aware that it's the accountants that rule Disney no, and no, other no, companies no, they like they don't, this. though. I mean... Two, an accountant, two movies in that have bombed and they've lost money on, would be yeah, well, well, going into the, hey, guys, don't do this anymore. But when I say corpo bean counters, I'm not really saying that it's the accountants making decisions. I mean that it's people who are, you know, executives who yeah. uh, don't yeah. have creative ideas to telling people with creative ideas to what to make up. Uh, so if I remember the story it, correctly. It, it, uh, Little Mermaid was not something that Disney wanted really to do, but they were in that time where Disney was on the verge of having to close down the animation uh, shops well, that actually, they had. The first drafts of Little Mermaid well done, were done by mm, Walt Disney himself. It's just like they weren't able to like... He wasn't sure what to do with it, and they kind of like shelved it a couple of times, oh, yeah. so it was a project that was done over the years, and Little Mermaid was done, was probably their last almost dying breath at It was, time, yeah, but absolutely. But yeah, w one thing that, that someone pointed out to me years ago is that uh, as beloved as the Little Mermaid story was, it the, doing a faithful recreation <laughs> no, of the Little not Mermaid do that. story is absolutely not on brand for Disney, and mm. uh, I mean, you know, I mean, well, well here, here, here's what for it's like. Disney is infamous for you know, do, doing the whole like uh, this is saving princesses thing, and do, doing stories where we, uh, where, you know, the whole like Disney princess yeah, that's uh, all Disney uh, princess uh, thing. aesthetic thing. Well, there's a whole bunch of those stories in. Uh, folklore and mythology that Disney wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole because the fact that uh, yeah, the they're, they're, they're damsel just, in distress um, storyline uh, was kind of bread and butter for Disney and because they realized that the majority of their paying audience were the moms and dads of young girls and so they yeah, catered as, to as that. Like, it, it wasn't actually what, what the, the children liked, it was what the parents were, were willing to uh, uh, buy for their kids. <laughs> yeah, but as time went on, they've perfected what made the Disney princess and how they could market it. So we have our Ariels, our whatever the one is from Aladdin, 
Um, Jasmine. Beauty and, Jasmine, thank you, Beauty mm -hmm. and the Beast. And they created the interest for the parents and were able to kind of then tailor it to make it what little girls wanted. And, of course, then the parents wouldn't buy it for the little girls. J J Jasmine's another one that, that had a, a pretty hefty uh, reimagining because the character does actually have a name in the original story. Really? Yes. Yeah, she it, is it, named it's Jasmine. She's actually not a nameless damsel in distress. She actually but the one who's is the one telling who wants to decide who she wants to go for. I think it's 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 a bit of a. Of Are we talking Thousand and One Nights specifically? Uh, Aladdin wasn't actually part of the Thousand and One. It wasn't. No. It, oh. it, in in, uh, cave in of English wonders printings of it, of it, it gets no. lumped in with it. But if you pay attention to it in the way that it's like structured in the books that get printed in English, Aladdin's like an appendix to the One Thousand and One ah. Nights with the way they print it, not yeah. actually one of them. Got it. And they oh, the that? Cave of Wonders we where the lamp is located off of it, but it's not the major element of the story. We have well, to stop well, for one. Stop. You... Hush. Mm -hmm. Sav has the best comment today. Deadpool is the best Disney princess. Mm, well, so yeah. is Ellen Ripley now. Yeah, but not originally. I mean, no. But New Deadpool. She's adopted. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, the character of Jafar uh, in... Uh, oh, they wasted him in the remake, cheese. The uh, Disney version of Aladdin is based on uh, characters from the original Aladdin story. It's just that it's a compilation of multiple of roles in the story into a single character that weren't originally the same character. Because, like, well, there is an evil well, sorcerer in, in the story. There is an evil advisor to the king in the story. They're just not the same person. Yeah, but you can't have in our Disney theory... Many Disney villains are too complicated. Yeah. It's just not going to work. So there used to be a Especially Disney formula to make a movie, which is you had to have children, male or female, or both, but they had to come from a dysfunctional or non-present family. They had to have X, Y, and Z aspects. They had to have a single antagonist rather than a bunch. Hence, you don't see a lot of bully movies in uh, Disney, but you do see a lot of evil stepmother type things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although they did, to be completely frank, they did make a few characters within the Disney trip that are like in the Disney Princess Pantheon that are not exactly damsels in distress yeah. got tangled with uh, with Princess that Rapunzel who's quite not a typical princess and there's uh, well, Brave with, Mer yep, with but those Marita started coming in after the uh, classic Disney Princess period uh, yeah. right. also the, the damsel in distress thing is uh, a bit there of was an oversimplification it is the yes it is, yeah yeah, Absolutely, like, it is. The, the original Aladdin story, how many genies were in the original Aladdin story? Oh, I have no clue. I don't know. I don't no know one does original. because it's an uncountable number. Interesting. But, yeah, see, because, like, here's the thing is that in the original story, uh, Aladdin had two objects that were uh, cursed with uh, uh, genies uh, trapped in them the, the lamp and uh, a ring. Well, I guess it all ties into the the folklore. But see, see, like, 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 kind of like an entity from. Like, like, like here's the thing, though, is that in neither case was it an actual named character. It was, uh, you rub the item, one of the many jinn that is uh, trapped in it will uh, ask you what you want. And then after uh, you tell that what you want, then the mini gen that are trapped in it will get to work uh, uh, granting your request. Which, frankly, I, I get the storytelling um, of millennia ago is different than now, but it really does feel a little bit like people just kept adding on to the story. How many of them were semi-phenomenal, nearly cosmic? I don't think any. Well, yeah, so I was like, th th that's the thing, is that Disney made up the, uh, actually increased the scale of power of the djinn. If I may it's interrupt like, one more time, we're going to do Swarm real quick. Oh, yeah, the okay. event. Because, like, um, the, the the stuff that you see uh, uh, we genie do... Uh, we will indeed. 
Go ahead. Uh, where, where he just like snaps his fingers and, and things just poof into existence. That's not how it worked in the original. Well, that's like, how it yes, in, in, in the original story, uh, Aladdin asks the jinn to uh, create a, uh, a castle for him to live in. But the jinn actually build the castle the hard way. They tell him how long it will take him th take to build it, and then he comes back when, and looks at it when they're done. It's not just snapping the fingers and having it poof into existence. Yeah, but we can't do that in a Disney movie because the concept of time versus instant gratification kind of ruins the, ooh, it's magical. Mm -hmm. Plus, it is how gins are portrayed in pop culture in general. It's not even a Disney thing. It's just how those mm. stories are recycled and distributed, like... In other recycled stories, so Disney, Disney just made it worse. Pop culture. Well, that's a matter of opinion, I guess. I, if you go with the original, it's just not translatable to. I've I, I've seen other, other I've seen other depictions of Jin, and in truth, live action versions of Aladdin that were more faithful to the original subject material. That you know, I mean, didn't actually just have the Jin's. Uh, uh, snap light. things into existence. Did you say bright light? Yeah. Okay. But uh, that, that's one of those things where it's just like uh, that's a version of the movie from like the 70s I think that I was thinking of. Yeah, if you go and back you can find versions of Aladdin dating to yeah, 30s and 40s. Probably even I earlier mean, than that. I mean it's a really old story and it's yeah. public domain so yeah. <laughs> public domain? Oh no that never affects anything. That's actually one of, the, one of those things that, that I came to realize is that most modern stories will never be as popular as pre-intellectual property work simply because of the fact that um, people don't want to pay for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... Having to buy rights to, 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 to a story is actually kind yeah. of sort of a death knell to popularity. Don't forget to repair satellites, everybody. Merida, yeah, okay. Merida's a, a princess. I'm sure a lot of people could identify with. Oh yeah, she's absolutely amazing. I don't, I've seen her actually very recently. Cause when it was in cinemas, I was just like not much into it anyway. But um, I do still remember that there were other characters, female characters, that were kind of like given a lot more. Um, what's the word? Control over the fate. Autonomy. Has been Autonomy, yeah, and like, generally they could just do a lot more. I still remember that, despite becoming somewhat of a of a woman in distress, Esmeralda could actually handle herself quite nicely, and oh, uh, I mean, her dam, even if that, she was technically not a princess. That, 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 that's kind of what, what where the, the the logic with Jasmine in the original Aladdin went, because like, she. Uh, she wasn't exactly someone who, you know, was helpless. It's just um, she wasn't a stereotypical princess in in those regions either, because women have no say who they marry. They are in <laughs> prearranged marriages, and she's like, no, I'm not going to decide for myself. My dad's not going to decide for me. My dad, who's a sultan, is not going to decide for me. And she was very stubborn about this, and she was uh, given a lot you're... more credibility and decision making than she would in that culture in that time. So that was another element that they've already given a lot more well, stuff to do for a female than they would normally. One thing to remember about some of the Arabian Nights stories is that they're so old that they they come from an older era. That oh, yeah, absolutely. But that so. what, what, when I'm saying this, I don't mean in terms of modern pop culture. I mean in terms of like the Arabic countries mm -hmm. behaving differently. Yes, which there has oh, yeah. been huge changes over the millennia. There's so many shifts over there, yeah. Like even like in the 1970s, Iran and mm -hmm. Iraq were so much more progressive than they are right now. 
like women were dressing like they were in the West, and no one has an eye. It's, it's not even not like just like dress, but education, uh, right? Educated, yeah, they could they could do the same thing as well, women also in the West. Also, is is that some of these stories uh, are actually um, borrowed from non-Arabic cultures, and 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 that that's one thing that a lot of people forget is that the Arabs systematically eradicated a several cultures that are now functionally lost to history and apparently stole their folklore oh come now nobody's ever done that before no it's not like we don't even it, know uh, where where some of these stories actually came from because when you pay attention to the stories you're like wait a second why is this talking about that mm -hmm. and it, it's just that, like things that don't really make sense from the perspective of modern day people but when you think about it, it's like, oh wait, this is uh, an old folk tale that someone wrote down that uh, wasn't actually written down by Arabs. I was gonna say, then, or then it, then more it, often, didn't make sense. <laughs> and more often, wasn't written no, no. down. Yeah, you know, it was just told over and over and over. And of course, when you tell a story over and over and over, it changes. Mm -hmm. well, what is actually down. interesting is well, um, recent uh, research around like Bible and but stuff predating the Bible proves that probably the Jewish God had a wife at the time and he, she was equal to him and that was mm. subverted later on with when it just didn't fit the narration anymore so she was successfully erased from from that but there are mentions and there's like earliest depiction of the God that later became like the Jehovah and who also in the Bible acknowledges that there are other gods. He's not the yeah. only god in existence. Right, right. Absolutely. Which later Christianity completely erases and ignores that he's the only mm. true god. And like, like, no, that's not what the Old Testament even says. Like, excuse me, so he's the... the did he, like, snap them out of existence? Or was there were four if, if, or something? If I may change the topic just a smidge, yeah. and not a lot, um, I think every culture, probably every religion, rewrites it as they need to. So something yeah. that was in their history gets mm, um, ignored, erased. Egyptians did that in their yeah. religion internally. Like yeah. Everyone thinks that the god Seth is the god of chaos and evil, but that, that's not always been so. Well, I mean, they, they, there was the Ra's defender in the underworld until the power struggle of regions, which were associated with, with gods, started to like fight for control. Over a certain cults, and, like, and, 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 and then there was grace. And then there was that one time when one of the pharaohs decided to just like completely erase the entire pantheon and replace it with himself. Akhenaten. Well, not himself. Actually, he was just the only one who could speak for Akhenaten, the sun god, <laughs> the sun disk. But yeah, he just erased yeah. everything, and then they erased him after he died. They made yeah, sure that exactly. of him left, is left. Like they destroyed his capital city that he built from scratch. That, like, it's, there's very little left in the I was going to say they the have rest. found traces of it um, using yeah, lidar well, like, and something like, else, and uh, like, 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 like some of the traces that they found of of his existence are things like you know, you you have this nice, uh, uh, carefully chiseled wall telling a, a detailed history, and then you slide your fingers across the wall, feeling the. Uh, uh, a shape of each letter chiseled into the wall meticulously and then you find this area where there's this fist-shaped chunk missing <laughs> yeah, because someone yeah. just yeah. bashed a hole in it. Sav would like they to remind us all out. that uh, she is indeed the goddess of evil. Let, let us not be mistaken with any of the other pretenders to the throne. She yeah, has a well, holy grail. That's the thing, Seth was just painted that way he never claimed to be the, the god of evil so well you still well in your right to be the, the god of not evil i'm the, just the, trying the, that this is actually something that you will see in uh um hindi religion with the, the goddess kali is that yes she's associated with killing things but that's not actually the only thing she's associated with Oh, yeah. well, one of the gods in the Indian pantheon, and there's so many of them in there, Ooh, yeah. is like the god of creation, but also the destruction. And that goes the same for uh, one of the Mesoamerican well, gods. I don't well, 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 see, one thing you notice in several cultures is that cr uh, a lot of times they will uh, associate uh, creating with um, irrevocable change. And irrevocable change often means stuff you don't like. Yep. Uh, uh, getting erased, or stuff you do like getting erased. 
just like you can't you, you know uh, create something new without getting rid of something that already exists. You can't well, make an island without almost breaking humanity some with God almost erased humanity with a flood because he didn't like it. Or not. Anyways, um that going, back to Dis going back to the Disney princess thing, um <laughs> That was How did we get off on that tangent? That was a leap, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, attempting to uh, talk about the uh, story of Aladdin and how it was different than the, uh, the the Disney version and how modern day Muslims wouldn't write that story. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nobody, nope, nope, nope. But, um, I mean, which culture that Disney has served their story actually like their depiction? Well. One thing that someone pointed out to me is that the one, uh, uh, 1001 Arabian Nights are actually framed as someone who's not a Muslim telling the stories to a oh, Muslim. Oh, is that how that is going? Cause, I mean, I know the uh, Tales of Shahrazad is supposedly well, 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 the... Well, 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 well that's an, like an in... It, it's not actually clear if Shahrazad was actually the... Uh, uh, e e even the person who wrote the stories. Oh, down. we know she didn't write the stories down. We well, don't know that Shahrazad uh, existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was getting at. It's like uh, the in uh, uh, narrative uh, character of Shahrazad is framed as someone who the the listener or what whoever doesn't actually you know have a strong familiarity. It was like some stranger. Like, hey. Ah, well. It's like, if you read the beginning of it, it's just like some woman that he this guy the, the, the character listing is some powerful king and the uh, woman telling the story is just some random person he he scooped up that he's planning to kill later, and the whole That's thing. That's not telling exactly the story. Like the the reason for the thousand one nights is that she's trying to con him into not killing her right, immediately. Exactly. Yeah. That is the story. Hang on a second. Let me make a note there. Over the course of the last twenty four hours, we've run. Uh, Swarm so many times that I've got them almost all set to just turn in at the 20 hour mark today. Yes, but Sav, I'm mean. Let's see. Uh, see, there's no room, Sav. I, I just have to keep everything right there as it is. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Saf says you may be older than me, but you are small enough for me to put over for me to put over my knee. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Saf, you're a lot smaller than I am. A lot. Anyway though, um yeah, to me. Uh so boy, I have a Lucari TFO and Undine ships on this one, so blech. I'm up for anything. Where are we at? 6.44. I got a few minutes left here. I'm going mining? No. I, well, I was mining and I left the tune down here. Oh. We, 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 we could go, go to fluidic space in, in that TFO. Um, <laughs> Undine Assault? Well, what what do other people... Ah, oh, jeez. What do other... doesn't actually take place in the fluidic space. Yeah, it does. Uh, Undine Assault? No. Well, where does so it take it's place, like, then? It's, it's got the weird oh, thingy thing he's going on. It's taking place in random systems and... Um, yeah, uh, well, well one, one of them actually has, has uh, multiple uh, possible locations. Oh, okay. It can be Ferenginar, it can be Gorinar, it can be one of the... How can you tell uh, you're inside their little three lanes well, just, and all the stuff's going on? Uh, look, 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 look at the mini-map. You, you can check the mini-map. The topic will tell you which system it is. And the planet will always be different. Uh, uh, the Ferengi version, you can actually um, uh, pay uh, Ferengi mercenaries yeah. with GPL to uh, help you. Yeah. That's hilarious. I, I wish they had did more of that in the game. Like, 
if they could do that for more systems. Cliff, I sent you an invitation. Cliff says, the BBC produced a great miniseries about Shahrazad and it had Dr. Bashir in it. How interesting. Oh, yeah. Everything I, I is connected to Star ago. Trek. Oh. And anyway, a, a, anyway, though, it's like uh, with the whole like Disney Princess thing, it's like a, a lot of the stories that, that they uh, pulled in for this aren't really all that, you know, like traditionally princess stories even. But they will be when we're done with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, what are what are we gonna do? Who's got something they need to do? Hmm. Borg TFO. You need a Borg TFO? Yeah. We did a Borg. Oh yeah, I actually have a complete Borg TFO. One. How is it uh, one Borg TFO a hard endeavor? I know, I know. It's like ten Borg are considered uh, ultra hard. I have no idea. It's sixty Zenkethi, but ten Borg. Somebody screw that one up. That's. That's cruelty. I, I think that they somehow just like messed up the the uh, which ones were hard and which ones weren't or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's something mm -hmm. going on. Uh, guys, got a taste or anything? We could do Resistance of Starbase One. No, or, I haven't done that in a while. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. I, I, it just says Borg TFO. I I, I wonder if this counts. Hey, Mar uh, Cure ground. Mar Hawkman, were you the one who needed Borg, or was that Death who needed Borg? I need one, but it already yeah. checked out yeah. with uh, when we did earlier. Hang on a second. Death, was that you who needed it? Yeah. Okay. It was. Mar Hawkman, well, I did also you need a board? Okay. Can somebody step out so that? Uh... I can. Oh, okay. Well, I I don't care if somebody, and I will invite Mar Hawkman then. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. I owe you one. Oops. Yeah, no worries. Mm. I'm still monitoring because the sales have gone up. <laughs> someone's uh, someone's buying. <laughs> someone's buying that, my stuff. Yes. No sales. When are we getting our Bajoran solar sales ship? Come on. Mm. Yeah, we have to make this private key then. Eventually. Do, 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 do. Is that before or after we get a tier six gum tube? <sighs> uh, um, one of the two. I'm a Ferengi right now. Yes, buy more, buy more Ooh. keys. Uh, if 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 we do a a ground one, then then I can also do my polaron damage endeavor. Are you guys okay with doing a ground? Yeah, I don't care either way. It yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um. Hive. Do, 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 do. Not that one. Da, 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 da. Into the hive. Is that okay with everybody? Sure. Okay. I mean. I, me personally, I, I'd be fine uh, with doing Cure Ground. Yeah, but it's long. I know, I know, I know. And I have to go to work in 11 minutes, so. The, uh, I, I know there's a lot of players who, who would be like, what? No, not that one. Ah, I, went away. Well, I don't mind it. I actually rather enjoy it. It's just that it takes a long time to accomplish everything. Well, I mean, I didn't really mean you. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. The, the, as old as that TFO is, there's a lot of players in the game who've just never done it at this point. Which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, there we go. This is coming off of a private queue, so you will not no, see it. Will. No, we will. We'll just all magically disappear. I suppose I should put some equipment on my tune. Yeah, we're good enough. Yeah, yeah. Are, are we a full group? Yes, we are. We're private. Ah. Mer Hawkman's uh, Klingon, so I had to go private queue for it. Ah. Okay. Got to Gotta bring my sword. Oh, I could use my sword, couldn't I? Have I opened it up? I have got my sword I there. Need, I need physical damage ground. There you go. I'm going to switch that oh, up. Oh, good. That one. Oh, my EMH already showed up. Nice. Cliff says, I wish they'd bring back the Guardian of Forever mission. Me too. I like that one. I love that map. I talked Wait, to the devs about the that game? in one of the interviews. That, 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 er, okay, I got the devs to talk about it on one of the 10 Forward streams. Mm -hmm. And uh, their logic with that one is uh, impeccably um, obtuse. Well, now that it's not their problem. Well, like, like part of it is that they had to get special permission to do that in the first place, and part of it is that 
the heck? Um, the, the, the person who was working on rebuilding it just, like, uh, I don't, I We're think it just isn't yeah, there anymore. We're waiting on you. There we go. Sorry. I, I th thought I would have enough time during the, uh, briefing thing to, uh, upgrade an iMod rifle, but apparently I didn't. No. This is one of the old school briefings that's short. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna go run into there. I wonder if if you can uh uh bioessence transfer jump over the uh, uh, gap in this one. You should be able to, yeah, it's not a wall, I don't think. Ooh, well that wasn't the button I meant to hit. No, it won't let me jump oh, over really. So it is a wall transfer. Oh, I died. That's inconvenient. I died, but I'm not hurt. And Nato died. Mucin, you're not supposed to die. I know, right? I I I, I was Some stuck in an animation and got electrocuted. Oh, uh, I probably got one of the laggy situations. It happened, especially on ground lately. I've been doing something against the Gorn because I had Gorn the other day, and it was mm -hmm. like. Um, Excuse me, why why am I stuck not moving? I'm I'm pressing button. They wouldn't no, no, like no, no, the no, server no, no, no. climbed out, it was just like animation glitch or something, and then I realized I was halfway close to death because uh I got thrown a rock over my face. I will say this Beowulf's blade is pretty dang good against the Borg. Beowulf oh, yeah. Oh would yeah. Have thought, would have thought that this is night and they're gonna find in Star Trek. Yeah, I, I I did a video trying out the Beowulf sword, and it's uh one of the best ones they've done. Yeah, it's, it's like, nice. The 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 custom melee weapons that they've been doing in in the last few releases of custom melee weapons are just really really good. Uh, sadly, the Emperor's sword from Discovery isn't that good. No, this one's a lot better. Well, it the looks Emperor, amazing. It looks the, great, but it's weak. The Emperor's sword is something where, where you need to remember one specific thing when using it, above all else. It doesn't do A B combos. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, either you, you, either, two, you either spam combos. A or you spam B. You don't alternate. Come on. Yeah. Let us in. Let us in. We got things to shoot. There are more like, to die. Like, like, A with the Emperor's Sword is a thrust attack, which is technically a cylinder, but it's a cylinder with, like, a one-foot radius. So it it's only going to hit multiple targets if they're stacked on top of each other. Hmm. Yeah, sadly, it's the, not the, 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 the B is a wide arc slash, which is going to hit multiple things quite often, but um, isn't necessarily going to... Um, Hit what what you you want unless you, so you just like choose which one <laughs> to use based Excuse on. Excuse me. On uh, what wh whether you want it to be a, a single target attack or an AOE attack. Mm. Yeah, they have run from there. Nothing here. Haven't done great work with it. It it, it, Again, it, it it looks great for cosplay, but it's not really. I mean, it, and I it, don't use many weapons in general in Star Trek. So that's because you don't play ground. No, but uh, when I do something ground, I, I would like to have a cool gun, or like a weapon, and I don't do a lot of ground we melee weapons because I do like the beams and stuff, mm -hmm. but when you get a cool item from low biles or low lockbox, it would be good if it was actually doing some good damage. And that sword is probably the biggest disappointment for me. Well, this one's surprisingly good. See, uh, m my thoughts on the Emperor's Sword, though, is is that it's better than any of the, the default uh, sword options. So I, I can't really sure. fault... And, and it's a so. relatively old custom wood, so it, I can't really fault them for it not being, you know, the, 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 the currently the best of the best. 
Well, you know, it's the Ember Sword. It's the it comes from the Murray Universe. They are more edgy. They're more damage oriented. You would expect a little also, bit. Also, it, it has the Ember Sword has a really cool power on it. Because the uh, a tertiary on it is uh, basically a second security team instead of you know the butt yeah. stroke that you have with most uh, weapons. Yeah, that's true. Oh come on, buy keys. Which, people, buy? which is something that, that they they did with the Sword of Winter constellations recently is that the tertiary on it also isn't a butt stroke. It's uh, it's a pet summon ability, but it's a pet summon ability that also damages enemies near you when you use it. Because like uh, the 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 tertiary on the Sword of the Winter constellations is actually. A uh, spin attack, and when you do the spin attack, it, it summons enemy. It, it summons bugs that aren't summoned by anything else in the game, to my knowledge. I don't know if anything else in the game it summons that specific bug pet. But yeah, it, the bug pets are pathetically weak. But the, the spin attack that that, that it uh, uses uh, with them is really cool. I got one of my captains on this. I'm not really impressed. Oh, you didn't say, Mom, what's the weather like today for you there? Um, still dark. Cold? No, it was that cold. It's supposed to get colder this weekend, but it was oh. rainy yesterday. Oh. I, I, well, I keep it was forgetting that. Freezing rain, but it didn't come. I thought we were going to get snow the other day after you had your snow because it got cold, it was dark in the middle of the afternoon, you could see the clouds moving in, and nothing. Yeah. Oh great, the temperature dropped during the day. It was warmer in the morning. What the hell? Uh, that's just weather. Come on now. Okay, this no, is amusing. It's the, the, like the, the, 8 the, degrees, and now the, it's the, like theoretically 7, but it's actually 2. And that's two above zero, so it's about two above the squeezing temperatures. Don't like. This, so, this is amusing. The Borg have the ability to adapt to fire melee now. No, really? What? Yeah. How do you adapt to fire? Adapt to f what? I mean, I mean, I guess you could grow resistance to it if you like modify. I don't know the properties of the nanites on the surface. I guess, but. I mean, y y y you kind of have the, the whole, like, logic of uh, how does adaptation work in general. <laughs> I mean, in general, I would imagine, because we also saw it kind of in the, in the, in the show, and TNG especially, that they were kind of just, like, reworking harmonics of their personal shields, because you could see that they take a few hits in, and then, then the shield adapts, and it deflects everything as, like, a surface... Like it's, it's, it's like a plate of energy that just covers that particular part of you at the time when the fire is detected. So I always assumed it was kind of something of, of like very sophisticated adaptational shield that would detect and learn from the t attacks it's absorbing. Um, but that was my, my understanding of it. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure if that was the thing. It was never really properly explained like, si like from some it, sort it, of it, it tan on this perspective. But as, it did as, look like a shield, and then that as, was... As, as, as someone Oops. I, Oops. I heard uh, put one. it once, is that they used no, no, bullshit no, no, no. him. No, 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 no. It's not the correct technical term. Get out of there. There we go. Got five. One oh. more. I need one more captain here, folks. One no, more captain. Kieran died. Around. I'll save Hang you. On. See, it actually worked that time. Either way, it just felt like uh, it was probably some sort of adaptational shield for me. I did like the idea, and that, again, Picard was so underusing all the tropes it was actually using. It's like, they pick up on something from old track, but it never actually emphasizes on it. There's no world building, like it doesn't say when that happened or how that happened, because the Borg cube that they had the artifact on, I think it was season one, with... Bill Jonathan Delarco's mm -hmm. character. Yes, that is um, season one. And they have this chamber, the Transfigure, 
whatever it was, the transportation yeah. that was it was from a race that Voyager meant on their journey. And at the time of the Voyager met them, they feel to be completely unthreatened by the Borg, and suddenly their technology is used by the Borg. So I'm very curious how that went Mod on. War. No, that wasn't bad war. That was a different race. They 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 had the ability to transport Voyager crew somewhere very far away from where they were, but they refused to do it because they refused to share that part of technology. It was a oh. guy who was actually kind of romantically wait, 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 uh, use the core of their planet as an integral part of the transporter. Perhaps, and I, I know that the Borg Queen well, well, Chamber... Well, well, Voyager, Voyager been... technically stole the uh, technology, but, uh, uh, or the, the specifications for the technology, but it, it just wouldn't work for them because the core of the planet is uh, absolutely essential to making it work. Yeah, and I remember that the, the chamber that the Queen had, that they kind of used in the, on the Borg Architect, actually kind of had that technology. So I was like, wondering how that came to be if it was integrated both to the planet and they weren't ready. They, they didn't feel threatened. So what happened between Voyager and Picard that the, actually the, that Borg, which was already a damaged and abandoned cube for some time, actually was there. So, you know, there's so oh, much... Oh, that, 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 that was interesting. I, I died right before the cutscene trigger because I accidentally <laughs> stepped in one of the green I bits. saw you step in there and I couldn't get in there to do anything. Mm. Wow. But, like, uh, when, when I saw myself in the cutscene, I was uh, not dead. Yeah, you waited until it came back to die. Um, no, Lexers, no, 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 yes, no, I, I was I, totally I, aware I could go to Nimbus, but I needed six, and I know that Into the Hive has six. At least. Uh, uh... I actually so, so saw so myself fall down before the cutscene, then in the cutscene <laughs> I'm standing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need to go get dressed and go to work. Um, no show tonight because it has to go to work, and that's right during the middle of showtime, so I have to be chauffeur for a few more weeks. Then that'll change. Okay. Have a good time, Mom. Thank you. Sunday. Thank you all for being here. I'm sorry, Death, what did you just say? I didn't hear you quite. Said thanks for letting me tag along. Hey, fun. always, 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 always. I wish we could have bigger teams. Then we could have more fun. South boo work, but yay, paychecks. Oh, paychecks are good. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. And as we like to stay around, say around here, stay. Hey. Oopsum. Oopsum.